So you're given a function like this and you are to find the root locus for this. So some general things we're going to be going over are centroid, asymptotes, zeros, poles, break-in, break-out points, angles of arrival and angle of departure and how to sketch it by hand. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to define the zeros. So zeros are what's on top and this is when s equals to negative one. So we have one zero and poles since there's an S on the outside, we know one of them is going to be a zero. And then you do a quadratic formula to this and you're gonna get complex conjugates of minus two plus minus two J. So we have a total of three poles and one zero. And now the centroid equals the poles minus the zeros over n minus m. This is going to be your n, this is gonna be your m. So, so this equals to, for a complex conjugate, since the imaginary parts will just cancel out since it's a plus and a minus, you just write the real parts. So it is, you add up all the poles. So minus two, minus two, plus zero, minus, the zeros, which is a negative one, and then n minus m, so n is your poles, so there's three, so n minus m would be three minus one, since there's three poles and one zero, and that's a two, so over here it's going to be over a two, this is minus four plus one over two, it's minus three over two, which is minus 1.5, so that's how you figure out your centroid. Let's go ahead right. Your asymptotes, the formula for that is 180 degrees divided by n minus m. And in this case, since our n minus m is a 2, we're going to have um, odd multiples. So we're going to have a plus and minus 90 degrees. So that's how you get your asymptotes. And now, we can sketch, so we're going to have our, so we have one zero at negative one, so let's just say this is minus one, and then we have a pole at zero, and then a pole at minus two, so this is minus two, so we have a pole here and a pole here, so this is minus two j, and this is minus two plus j. 2j. And then we know that our centroid is at negative 1.5 with asymptotes plus and minus 90 degrees. So there we go. Now how do we figure out the root locus? So the root locus lies between zeros and poles that have odd number of zero and pole on the left and right of them. So what I mean by that is, let's say between this pole and this zero, so in the middle here, you have an odd number of poles and zeros to the left and to the right. And this is true for this because one, two, three zeros and poles, and then you have one on the right of it. So the root locus, so this would be a root locus here, and then nowhere else because on the real axis, you don't have anything else that could be a root locus. So now what we're going to be doing are break-in, break-out points. Now to satisfy a break-in, break-out points, it will be the numerator derivative of the denominator minus the denominator derivative of the numerator, and that has to equal to zero. So we're gonna go ahead and solve. So the numerator we see is just s plus one. We ignore the constant derivative of the numerator is just going, since it's just s, it's just going to be 1. And then we have the denominator, which is, if you factor this out, it's s cubed plus 4s squared plus 8s. And then derivative of that is just going to be 3s squared plus 8s plus 8. Now we are going to do this right here. So we have the numerator, s plus 1 
derivative of the denominator times 3s squared plus 8s so 8 minus the denominator s cubed plus 4s squared plus 8s and derivative of the numerator which is just the 1. When you factor this out 3s cubed plus 8s squared plus 8s plus you do the 1 now 3s squared plus 8s plus 8 minus s cubed plus 4s squared plus 8s equals 0. So now what you do is you add all these up. So I'm going to erase this part and I'll redraw the graph. So now we are going to have 3s cubed plus 11s squared plus 16s plus 8 minus s cubed plus 4s squared plus 8s equals to 0. So you subtract that, it will be 2s cubed. You subtract this, 7, 16 minus 8, 8s, and 8 minus 0. So you go ahead and you factor this out and you get roots of negative 2.5460 and then the other two roots are complex conjugates 4770 plus minus 1.591j. Now these complex conjugates cannot be breakout break-in points because they're not on the real axis. The only uh, one that could be is this one, but negative 2.54 was not on the root locus. As um, you saw previously, our root locus was from zero to negative one, and this is negative 2.54. And since this is not on the root locus, we have no break-in breakout points. So the next thing we are going to solve for is angle of arrival. Now for an angle of arrival, there needs to be complex zeros in the loop gain. And since our zero is just a negative one, it's not a complex zero, there will be no angle of arrival. But if there was, the formula for angle of arrival is just 180 degrees plus the sum of the angles of the poles minus the sum angles of the zeros. But in this case, we do not have an angle of arrival. So now what we're going to be solving is for an angle of departure. For an angle of departure, there needs to be complex poles, which in our case, we have complex poles at negative 2 plus 2j and negative 2 minus 2j. So there will be an angle of departure. And the formula for angle of departure is just the opposite of angle of arrival, which is the sum angles of the zeros minus the sum angles of the poles. So this is fairly easy. I'm going to show you how to do it on the graph. So we had a pole at zero and then we had one at negative 2 plus 2j and negative 2 minus 2j and then we also had a zero 
at negative 1. And then we had our centroid at negative 1.5, which was 90 degrees. Now, how do you find this? So when you do an angle of departure, you look at one of the complex poles and you do everything in respect to that. So what this means, angle of zeros. So let's say we choose this pole right here. So it will be in respect to that pole and the zero angle will just be angle of the departing pole minus the zero at location. So what this means, the angle, so the departing pole, we're choosing it to be negative 2 plus 2j, and then the zero at location, we only have one zero, and it's at negative 1, so minus 1. And this just ends up being minus 2 plus 1. It will be minus 1 plus 2j. We are going to do this on the calculator. So on the calculator, you just press math. You go over to complex, press 4 for angle, and you're going to type this in. So negative 1 plus 2 second i. You're going to see 116.565 degrees. Now, if we wanted to do this by hand, what you would do is you always put, because we're going from here to here, so it is respect to the real axis, which is 180 degrees. So it'll be 180 degrees minus, and it'll always be inverse tangent. So the inverse tangent, as you look over here, there's a triangle here, and we are calculating this angle so this right here, this is opposite over adjacent. This is negative 2. So this is a length of 1 and a height of 2 because it is 2j. So it is a height of 2, 1. So it would be 1 over 2, but because it's inverse, it would be 2 over 1. So 2 over 1 is just minus 2. You do inverse tangent of 2. You get 63.4349. So when you do minus that, 180 minus that, and you get the same thing. Since we only had one zero, now it is ready to do the angles of the poles with respect to the departing pole. So let's go ahead and do angle of the departing. So minus 2 plus 2j minus so we're going to do from here to one of the other poles and then from here to the other pole since there's only two poles. So from here to here, this is lies at zero. So you're just going to get the same thing. And that equals, so again, we're going to go ahead and do that, minus 2 plus 2j. We are going to get 135 degrees. If you were to do this by hand, Again, so it is from here to here, and it's that angle there. So the opposite would be a length of 2 over a height of 2. So it's 2 over 2, 1. And since it is inverse tangent, it's the same thing in this case, 2 over 2, which is just 1. And inverse tangent of 1 is 45. So when you do 180 minus 45, you get the same result. So now we are going to do the other one, which is the angle from the departing pole minus, and since this is directly below, it is minus 2 minus 2j. Two so for this one, you don't have to, um, by inspection, you can tell that this is directly underneath it, so it's 90 degrees. But if you had to do it, it would just be angle... So minus 2 plus 2, that would be a 0. And then plus 2j, plus 2j would be plus 4j. And if you do complex 4j, you can see it's 90 degrees. So now we have everything we need to calculate the angle of departure. So the angle of departure is 180 degrees plus the sum of the zeros. 
So 116.565 degrees minus the, the sum of the poles, 135 plus 90, it would be 225. And calculating this, you are going to get, so we're going to do 180 plus 116.565 minus 225 and we are going to get an angle departure of 71.565 degrees so we go to draw this by hand we have zero minus two plus two j minus two minus two j we have a centroid at negative 1.5 and then we have a zero at negative one this is negative two so our angle of departure will be going towards these asymptotes at the centroid and our root locus lies right there so first things first, we write our transfer function. And what we do is we take the coefficients from the numerator and the denominator. So right here, the numerator coefficients are one and one, and the de denominator are one, four, eight, and then zero. So once you get your transfer function, then you can just type in R locus of the letter you assigned it, and you will get your graph. As you can look on the graph right over here, you'll see that the root locus lies between zero and negative one, and that the angle of departure goes along the centroid, which goes to infinity. Now we're going to calculate the zero on the poles. For zero, you just type zero, and the letter you assign to your transfer function, and you write pole, and the letter you assign, and you will get your poles. Now over here, what I'm going to do is assign an array for the coefficients of what the equation numerator derivative of the denominator minus denominator derivative of the numerator would output. So after distributing and calculating for that, I get 2s cubed plus 7s squared plus 6s plus 8 equals 0. I put that into the array as 2, 7, 6, and 8, and then once I do that, then I just type in roots and the letter I assigned. And this will output all the roots for that equation. And as you can see, the two complex conjugates cannot be break in, break away points because they're not on the real axis. And the only real root we get is a negative 2.5, but that's not even on the root locus. So we do not have a break in and break away point. 